Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Stubbs, and uh, I am going to be talking with uh, my colleagues Ruti Petty about how we have started using TLA Plus to explore the design of one of our software systems, Avico. So I just want to start off with a little outline, a little overview of the talk. Uh, we'll, we'll begin with some brief introductions of ourselves. And then as part of um, background and, and, and framing the conversation, I thought we'd give a little introduction to um, the work that we do, the environment we work in, and how we kind of envision using TLA Plus for that, for that work. And then um, we're going to go into some details of, of the effort we've done so far. So we're going to be talking about um, the specific software platform with Abaco that we've started using TLA Plus with, and um, our effort to use TLA Plus um, as a part of verifying Abaco certain aspects, certain properties of, of the Abaco system. We'll talk about the overview of our spec. We, we do have a, a, a TLA Plus spec for Abaco now, um, the invariance and the temporal properties that we've used there. And then we'll conclude with some next steps and, and kind of future directions for, for how we're going to be using TLA Plus. Okay, so just uh, some, some brief introductions. So my name is Joe Stubbs. I'm a research associate at the Texas Advanced Computing Center um, at the University of Texas at Austin. I lead the Cloud and Interactive Computing Group. Um, and so our group does uh, everything from uh, system administration to software design and, and deployment. And Smruti, my colleague here, who, who has, um, you know, this is a joint work, uh, is in my group. Smruti, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, I am an engineering scientist in the cloud and interactive computing group at the Texas Advanced Computing Center. Cool. Thanks, Smruti. So, yeah, so um, I thought I would just begin by talking a little bit about um, the Texas Advanced Computing Center, TAC, where we, where we work. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, TAC is um, really a nationally recognized um, academic computing center. Um, it's technically a research unit um, of the University of Texas at Austin. It's not actually affiliated with the computer science department um, or, or really any other department on campus. Um, and so we, while we do teach um, a, a few courses and we, and we take some students, uh, the primary mission of, of TAC is to deploy and operate advanced computing uh, systems for the academic research community. Our, our, flagship, our flagship system is a system known as Frontera. Um, this is a, a top 10 system in the world, I think top six at this moment, um, based on you know, LINPAC style benchmarks. Um, and it's, it's certainly the highest ranked system at any academic institution in the United States. But, um, but we're a lot more than just Frontera. Um, you know, if you have used TAC systems um, at all, you're probably familiar with Stampede, uh, which was our, our previous uh, flagship system, um, also debuted in the top 10, and it's been in production for about five years. But we have um, about 12 production class systems um, at, this, at this time, together with uh, a small number, two or three, four different um, kind of researchy systems each with their own properties and optimized for different uh, types of problems. Um, it's also kind of interesting that we, we really just, we do just about everything um, that's involved in, in uh, running a, a center like this, with the exception of fabricating hardware. Um, so we manage our own cooling system, which happens to be a 50 million gallon uh, chilled water station. Uh, we deploy and monitor the hardware. We build and optimize research codes, the actual analyses codes that are going to run on the systems. And then, uh, and this is a large part of where my group comes in, um, we develop a lot of software, including web services and web applications that facilitate access to the research systems. So yeah, as I say, that's where our, our cloud software uh, comes in. Uh, that's, where, that's where my group comes in. So I thought we'd say a little bit about about that and, and how we are, we're uh, imagining using TLA plus or how we've started using TLA plus. So um, firstly, the, the users of our, of our work are, are typically domain researchers. They have expertise in some specific domain of research. It could be science or uh, you know, domain of engineering. Um, and they have maybe some proficiency in software, usually not a lot of expertise. Some of them have never written any code at all. And so our software tries to lower the barrier for these kinds of folks 
to use the advanced storage and computing resources that we deploy at TAC. On the other end of the spectrum, we do have a handful of users who are experts um, in, in programming. And, and so the other kind of uh, usage modality is that folks um, leverage our systems for programmable interfaces to the, the resources to enable sort of um, complicated you know, workflows, dynamic workflows, workflows that span multiple systems potentially, et cetera. So in, in either case, however, um, you know, the, the, the key point is that the research experiments, the, the analyses that are done on these systems through our software um, really depend on the software itself. And defects in the software, in, in our software, uh, can lead to errors in, in the scientific results. So in a way, we are a, a part of um, you know, this, this problem that you've probably heard about, uh, this reproducibility crisis that we have, in not just in computational science, but really in, in all of science, um, but so our you know, defects in our software contribute to that re reproducibility crisis. And we see TRA Plus as providing really um, one of the first sort of truly accessible techniques for applying formal methods to our software and our designs uh, to help reduce defects. So um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about um, a specific platform that we have begun using Abaco in. So this is our functions as a service. Uh, platform, or, excuse me, that we begin using TLA Plus in. Um, so we, uh, this is our Abaco Functions as a Service uh, platform. And um, Abaco stands for Actor-Based Containers. Um, it is a Linux container technology-based um, platform. So, so Abaco basically combines Linux container technology with the Actor model of concurrent computation um, to provide functions as a service. Um, if you're not familiar with functions as a service, these are, these are um, pop, becoming more popular in, in a lot of the commercial cloud offerings. So AWS Lambda is an example, Google Cloud Functions, all the major you know, cloud providers have them. The basic idea with any kind of functions as a service platform uh, is that users provide you know, atomic units of, of computation functions uh, to a service, and then the service runs them on its platform um, in response to some kind of, um, you know, commands issued by the by the user. So Abaco is a specific one that is is kind of geared to the research research computing community. Um, it, the prototype showed up in in late 2015, early 2016, and then NSF funded it officially uh, in 2017. So at this point, um, you know, we've we've been in production for over two years. Uh, we have nearly 50,000 actors that have been registered. Um, and, and a number, you know, a number of different research projects using it. And so I think uh, Smriti at this point is going to, I'm going to hand it over to her to talk about uh, a little bit more about Abaco and its basic usage. Yeah. Now to um, use Abaco platform, uh, a user defines an actor by sending an API request to the Abaco system with an URL to a publicly available Docker image. Now the user then uh, can send messages to uh, an actor by making an API request to the URL assigned to the actor. The messages get queued uh, in a uh, message queue assigned to each actor. Now for each message, a Docker container is launched uh, using the Docker image, uh, the actor's Docker image obtained from the public registry. Now the system injects this original message into the container. Um, Abaco collects any of these uh, results uh, registered by the actor. It uh, collects all the container logs, uh, any uh, extra information, the resource utilization, and exposes this information to the end user through different endpoints. Now user can also do actors uh, update, can also delete uh, actors. Uh, share actors with other users at a specified level, uh, like read, execute, and update. And next slide. Yeah, so let's dive into some of the architectural details uh, of Abaco. So Abaco uh, consists of a distributed system of uh, agents. Uh, so the first one is the API front end. Uh, uh, so it receives a uh, HTTP request from uh, end users. Uh, processes this request and make HTTP response back. 
the general runtime states uh, uh, of the system is stored in MongoDB, uh, and the RabbitMQ is used for, uh, as a messaging queue for communication between the agents. Uh, spawners start and stop the workers, uh, and the workers actually facilitate the execution of yep. actor containers. Now each worker is assigned to exactly one actor. Then the next agent is the autoscaler. Uh, so autoscaler uh, agent monitors the size of the individual actor message queue. And it also uh, keeps track of number of workers assigned to each actor. Uh, the autoscaler send message to spawners to start or stop the workers. And these messages are again brokered by rabbit queue. So when a user actually issues an uh, update request, uh, the API sends a message to all the uh, current workers or the existing workers of the actor to shut down after finishing their executions. So, uh, so as Abaco is being used by several research projects and has been integrated into their complex scientific workflow, we have observed some issues at scale, particularly with the actor update. Uh, next, next slide. Yeah, so uh, a user uh, uh, to update an actor definition, the user makes an actor update API request with the updated Docker image reference URL. So all the existing workers must complete their execution with the current image. And for subsequent uh, executions, including the messages in the queue, new worker must be started with the new image. So uh, internally, the Abaco sends a shutdown after completion message to each uh, existing worker uh, by, uh, uh, via RabbitMQ. And the messages get received by workers in command thread and then the communicate it the workers command thread communicates uh, with the main thread via uh, the shared memory. So we have observed issues uh, uh, when the system is under the load that new execution were being started with a stale version of the image. Now, upon inspection, uh, we found that there is a race condition. So when the water, uh, the auto scaler could be actually uh, queuing up new workers to be started at the same time, the user sends a request to update the actor. So there is a race between the new workers getting created by the auto scaler and the shutdown messages getting sent to the existing worker sent by the API. So note that here, uh, even though it seems that the race condition is obvious, it was not, uh, it, it became clearer only after we uh, uh, evaluated with the design, evaluated the design using TLA plus. So next, uh, 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 Joe will talk about verification of Ebaco with TLA plus. Thanks, Murti. Yeah. So um, I thought we would just kind of start with a, a spec overview. Um, so, so we did create a spec, an Abaco spec, and um, there are different, obviously different components to that spec. Um, so, so firstly, we have a set of constants in the spec. And, and what, we've, what we've observed is that those constants really serve two purposes. One is to represent configurable aspects of Abaco itself. So the Abaco runtime um, takes a configuration file, and, um, and that file controls different aspects of the behavior of Abaco. So you can control things like um, the maximum number of workers that any actor can ha ever have, um, you know, aspects of how the scaling up and down works, et cetera. So that's, that's one way in which we, uh, we le leverage constants. The other um, is to allow us to control the state space that is explored by TLC, right? And so this is um, things like the maximum number of messages that the system will, will send, uh, the maximum number of workers, and so, and so forth. So we, we, we observe that um, you know, it was pretty easy to get a, a very large state space, and we needed these fine controls um, to make sure TLC could, could complete in a reasonable amount of time. Um, of course, we also have variables uh, in our 
in our spec. Uh, these, for the most part, these represent um, the runtime state stored in our persistence layers, right? So the MongoDB um, for the, the actual runtime state, uh, the status of actors, the status of workers, et cetera. Um, and then the RabbitMQ um, the, the, to, to include the, the messages that have been queued. Uh, so the actor message queues, uh, the, the command queues, etc. Then, of course, we have actions in our spec, and we've we've kind of classified these into to two two groups. Uh, sort of one one group that we're calling top level actions. Um, these essentially are the the, the actions that represent um, the initial agents of change in the system. So this is, uh, for example, receiving an HTTP request from a user. We have a set of actions that represent um, those you know, receiving uh, each of those um, types of, of HTTP endpoint requests. And then we have a set of actions um, that correspond to the autoscaler uh, initiating some kind of change. For example, creating workers or, or starting to delete workers. And then we have a, another group of actions which essentially represent the asynchronous activities triggered by that first group. Um, and you know there are different ty types of, of these actions, including you know actions generated by actor executions, so workers receiving messages, becoming busy, then freeing up later. Um, you know actions generated by um, API requests or in response to API requests, so updating the actor, deleting the actor, and and then of course actions triggered by autoscaler commands. So we. Um, so we were in a way sort of doing the reverse of I guess what is what would be considered best practice right with with TLA plus which would be to write a TLA plus spec and then write software we did it the opposite way we um, had a software system and and you know we, we didn't know about TLA plus when we wrote it um, but we were kind of building a spec um, after the fact um, but but the our main goal was of course twofold to learn TLA plus but to but primarily to to kind of find and understand um, problems in, in the design. And so we used a few additional, um, additional tools in TLA Plus to, to accomplish that. We have um, a, a couple of invariants. So the, the first, the type invariant, um, is just to, main, just to ensure that um, all the variables maintain the correct type throughout, um, uh, throughout a behavior. And then, of course, critically, uh, this, this invariant that, that you know, needs to say something about Something to the effect that all workers use the image they're supposed to use when starting an execution, and this was, you know, at the heart of the problem um, in that we were observing in production, and um, and it was a challenge to get this definition right. Um, you know, we different definitions that we tried failed, and and that was that was um, understandable because it was failing in production, but but ultimately, um, you know, it was kind of through defining this that we were led to a, a good design. And I'll say more about that in just a minute. But we also have temporal properties that we, that we uh, heavily depended on. So primarily that all the actor messages are eventually processed. This is a key feature of the, of the system. And that all command messages are processed. Um, so we wanted to make sure as we were exploring um, the designs that we maintained these temporal properties. I also mentioned that we depend on weak fairness. Um, for uh, most of our actions, uh, we, we need to ensure that they eventually uh, take place. So um, in, in finding the problem with the design, of course, we, we leverage the TLC model checker uh, heavily. Um, and as I mentioned, we, we realized that with our current implementation, with, with, the, with the current implementation of Abaco, we couldn't find a reasonable definition um, for this all workers use the correct image version um, uh, property um, that would hold, right? And and so we tried different ones, right? We tried different examples, such as you know all workers use the same image as as the actor uh, is defined with. Um, all workers use the same image as each other. It was kind of obvious that these wouldn't work. It's probably obvious to some of you now, but um, but you know we were exploring and and um, you know and, and so we weren't quite sure at first. Um, but, but but what did become clear to us was that we were going to need to modify the design of Abaco, and through that process, um, a, a, a reasonable working definition of the property um, would become clear, and that's kind of what happened. Okay, so I think Smuti, you're going to talk about this. Yes. So um, 
so here are, are, are some of our initial outcomes. Uh, so as Joe already mentioned that we were looking into the definition uh, of correct uh, workers uh, image. Uh, like all the workers should use the correct uh, image version. So uh, we made uh, several changes to the current design and uh, which actually leads to our new design and in which the, that invariant uh, actually gets satisfied. So the, one of the first changes was that the actor image revision number. So we introduced a monotonically increasing uh, revision to, uh, to an image uh, to, with every update. So in the current line, uh, the autoscaler uses uh, the image and a flag that indicates uh, when the existing uh, uh, worker should be shut down. While in the new design, the actor object saves the image revision on every update. Uh, which is in our actor update receive action. And also workers are started with the uh, image revision, uh, which is in our create worker um, action. So the second change is the actor status change, uh, changing from updating image to ready. So we observed that this is an important step, like when the actor status, we are changing from updating image to ready, so in the current implementation, the first worker that is started with the new image uh, will update the actor status to ready. Uh, while in the new design, the autoscaler moves the actor status to ready only when all of its workers have the same uh, uh, and the latest image. Then the third change was we have uh, added some new checks in the autoscaler uh, for creating a new worker. So in the current uh, design, we have workers uh, can be created regardless of the status of other workers. While in the new design, a new worker can only be created if there is no idle workers. Next slide. And we have some more changes as well. So, so the next one is that we also have some new checks uh, when deleting a worker by the autoscaler. So in the current one, the autoscaler does not delete stale workers and the revision is not considered because the revision uh, of an actor image concept was not there in, in the current design. So at the time the user issues an update, a shutdown message is sent to the current set of workers and that is where we see the risk condition. Uh, and the new design, a worker will be deleted anytime it is idle and does not have the current image revision. And finally, we modify when a worker can receive a message. So in the current one, a worker's main thread receives a new message uh, unless uh, it is interrupted uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the worker, th uh, worker thread. Uh, while in the new design, uh, a worker's main thread checks its revision number against the actor's revision number before retrieving the new image. So with all these changes with the, uh, we made and uh, in our new design, uh, we saw that uh, the, the invariant actually holds for the new design. Uh, now, Joe will talk about the next step. Thanks, Ramuti. So yeah, so just some some first first set of next steps. Um, so we're planning to implement these these design changes, code them in Abaco based on on this new TLA spec. Uh, we we really have a great deal of confidence it's going to just generally improve uh, the overall system. Um, we are also in the process of looking at uh, the proof system um, for writing proof of correctness. So um, yeah, I will point out that the earlier versions of the, the spec um, had you know, subtle dependencies on constants. So you, these sort of combinatorial um, values of different constants could uh, make the checks pass or fail. And that was probably you know, mostly due to just kind of bad spec code on our part. Um, but it was, you know, it was kind of some surprise uh, you know, at some points to, to, to try with you know, 
uh, values two, three, and four and see passes and then try with values four, five, and six and see failures. And so we, we really like the idea of having, um, you know, proofs that give us absolute guarantees um, on, on the properties. But, um, but of course, we will need to kind of weigh the value of those absolute guarantees with, with the time it takes to write the proof. So we're, we're, still, we're still in the process of, of writing proofs now. Um, but in general, we're very encouraged by the results and, and the value that TLA Plus has provided for us, and we're planning to use it on other projects. We have, you know, we have other, you know, similar services. You know, services very similar in their architecture to Abaco, such as our data transfer service, which, um, you know, brokers, um, you know, large data movement between systems, um, and it has a task queue and workers and a, you know, a scale auto scaler, et cetera. So, so there, there are services um, that are very similar that we're planning to use it with. Um, we're also planning to use it um, with um, our associate sites feature, which is where um, institutions can deploy components of our software to run in their own data centers, um, subsets of, of the components, and then, and then in, in general, those components end up communicating with each other and, and back at, at, at uh, the services running at TAC, um, you know, via messages sent over a, a wide area network. So, so of course, there are some security um, concerns uh, associated with our associate sites feature, and so we're interested in using TLA Plus to, to verify some of the security properties. Um, and then thinking more, more forward, uh, we are interested in including TLA Plus in some of the courses we teach at UT Austin, um, in particular, our, our, 30, our COE 332 systems design course, which is part of the computational engineering program, and we look at designing systems, so we think it's just a perfect fit for that, and, and or a potential SQL course, which we haven't um, written yet, but is, is a, um, you know, the, the design course is very popular, and, and, and I think there's a lot of demand for even a SQL. And then we, in general, are looking for, for ways that we can provide uh, you know, mechanisms and, and, and aid and encourage researchers to use formal methods in their own software. And so whether that's training or, or tooling or you know, additional, additional efforts, we, we look forward to finding new ways to kind of um, advocate and evangelize uh, the use of TLA Plus uh, in the broader community. Okay, so thank you very much. I think that's all we have. Um, if you're interested in looking at the spec, uh, there's a GitHub, a link to our, the GitHub project there, um, and of course, a link to our own uh, Abaco code. If you have any um, thoughts or questions, uh, you know, please get in touch. Uh, our email addresses are there, and thank you very much.